We will now briefly discuss linear and angular velocity. I will start with a comic strip. Calvin and Hobbes, probably before most of your times, this comic makes the following point. Um, Calvin's dad in this comic is looking at a spinning record, so a spinning disc. And he says, well, look at a point near the inside of the disc, and look at a point near the outside of the disc. These points are spinning together. So they'll make a complete rotation in the same amount of time. But the point out here has to travel further to come make a complete circle than the point here does. So because they're traveling different distances, in the same amount of time, the point out here must be going faster than the point in here, even though they're spinning at the same RPM, the same number of revolutions per minute. And we would say that the points on the disk have the same angular velocities, but different linear velocities. So say that we have a circle and we have a point on the circle and the point is rotating clockwise, counterclockwise, doesn't matter for our purposes. We can define two types of speed. I know I just used the word velocity, let's say speed instead. We can define the angular speed. And the angular speed is defined as angular rotation per time unit. So let's discuss this a little, or I guess really let's do an example. Um, one of the examples from the textbook Suppose the circle is a water wheel and it takes five seconds to do one complete revolution. Let's find the angular speed. So this theta here, if this is the center of the wheel and this is the starting point, then this theta is the angle between the starting point and the ending point. Like if it if over five seconds, the point moved from here to here, we would use this angle theta in the formula. Well, that's not what we have. Um, what we have is that it takes five seconds to do one complete revolution, 360 degrees, or two pi radians. T is the time it takes. It takes five seconds. So, 
pausing very slightly to divide two pi by five, the angular speed is 1.257 radians per second. Now, meanwhile, this point on the water wheel is physically traveling through space. And it makes perfect sense to talk about its speed in feet per second or meters per minute or some uh, you know, measurement of speed that is not talking about rotations. Um, so this formula We talk about linear speed, just to make sure we don't confuse it with angular speed. Sorry, I don't know why my document camera is sort of... Okay, I hope that fixed it. Um. The formula for the linear speed is um, the formula that you have, have seen. Let me pause this and see if there. I think it was doing some kind of auto-focusing. The formula for the linear speed is hopefully familiar. At some point when you were kids, we probably all saw that distance equals rate times time. So the distance is the distance that this point travels. Time is time. And rate is the linear speed. Let's do an example. Let's keep the water wheel and keep the five seconds to do one complete revolution. And let's say the radius of the wheel is 20 feet. And let's find the linear speed. So to do this, example, we are going to need the circumference formula, because if we start here and travel one full revolution over this five-second interval, we've traced out the circumference of the circle. And the circumference of a circle is 2 times pi times the radius. So in this particular case, with the radius of 20, the circumference is about 125.664 feet. And now we will bug and play with our formula, the velocity is the distance a point on the wheel travels. Divided by the time it takes, we're looking at one full revolution of five seconds.
And again, pausing briefly to do the division, we can find the linear velocity or the linear speed, I should say. So in this video, we've looked at the linear speed. We've looked at the angular speed. Those two concepts are related, as you might expect, but I prefer to keep these videos kind of short. So let's end this here and discuss the relationship between these concepts in its own video.